Natasha, and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today I am here to show you just what a difference a frame makes. Now, we are going to keep this simple because that is how I like my card making to be. I like it to be not too complicated, but I really want that, that effect, that absolute punchline, that beautiful uh, end result. And so to get that, we are going to do so, so simple, but add a gorgeous frame. Now today I'm going to be working with this uh, Elegant Twist by Spellbinders. I know that they also have this in a square shape, but there are so many different options. It doesn't matter what the frame is. So on the left here, this one is called uh, the Basic Designer Dies Inverted Scalloped Circles by Dress My Craft. On the right, I have the Rings Around the Circle by Spellbinders. And if you don't have sets that are already in a specific shape, like a square or a rectangle, then perhaps one like this Winter Borders by Spellbinders. This is just a whole lot of different uh, borders and you can create your own square or rectangle really easily using these. That one there is my favorite. Um, and so it doesn't matter which frame you use, just something adds a lot. Now, I am going to be working so basic here today. I'm going to be cutting out this frame a couple of times and we're going to create a few cards. So I am holding this down with some mint tape as I run this through my die cutting machine. Now this takes a second just to punch out all those little pieces, but they fall out pretty good. I'm not going to lie. It was pretty good and that's part of the reason why I reach for this set. Now we are going to start off today by using this gorgeous stamp set from Visible Image. This is called Forever in Your Heart and this feather just takes the cake but even better all three of the gorgeous sentiments are ones that I feel I would use. There's a difference between having lots of sentiments on the page in the stamp set and having lots of sentiments that I would use. Uh, so I definitely make sure before I go ahead and spend my money, before I purchase that it's the latter of the two. Now I have stamped this out using some Twilight ink from Catherine Puller. I think it's just a little bit softer than using black. Obviously it's a gray. I stamped it twice to make it a little bit darker. Um, and that's the beauty of using some sort of stamping platform. But then I have used some clear embossing powder. I'm then going to put some Twisted Citron Cracked Pistachio and some Salty Ocean squish them down onto an acrylic block and just do some very, very, very quick watercoloring. Uh, as in, I don't think I'd call this watercoloring, I'm just putting it down onto inside the feather. I am using a water brush. I add water to the surface first. This is just plain, regular cardstock, so I don't want to be messing around with a whole lot of water and keep it coming, but really, truly, I am just adding on some of the blue, then I'm going to move into the cracked pistachio, and then down the bottom I will put a light layer of the twisted sit from. Now a little word of warning here, as in don't do what I did. Be patient and dry your feather first. Otherwise, when you put on gorgeous splatters like this, you'll just get big blobs because it'll all join in with the water party that's already on top of the feather. So dry it off <laughs> and then do the splatters. Uh, I picked the blue just because it stands out the most against the background. I'm doing it sort of in the top right hand corner uh, and down the right hand side a little bit because I want room to stamp this gorgeous sentiment. This simply says with sympathy, but I love the font, I love the size, I love that it has those swirly edges so I can either make the sentiment smaller if need be or make it bigger depending on what space I need to fill. I will pop this up with some uh, foam tape and then pop this down onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. This card took me minutes, I would say less than 20 to create and I think this looks pretty good. As I said, we're moving fast through this. Here comes the second one. I am sure that you have heard me say before, I'm not a huge fan of lots and lots of layering stamps. Um, that's stressful to me. <laughs> that takes a lot of concentration and I like perfection. I like things to be just so, so that takes up a lot of my energy. So this one here obviously has two layers and it really has two layers. There is uh, just two stamps. They are all sort of connected, even the flowers and the bird. And I am just going to line this up. Now I'm actually going to use the black image on the packaging to sort of get the angle that I want for the front here just because I find it hard to picture it a little bit with the clear stamps. 
Now, actually, this is kind of the second layer. So I'm going to put down the base layer first uh, on top of my uh, my other layer. I know this sounds confusing. So I literally have two clear stamps sitting on top of each other. I close my lid. It picks up both of them. And then I just separate. And that way I know everything is going to be where I want it to be. I'm going to use some Crate Pistachio and Tumbled Glass for this. So first of all, I just use the Tumbled Glass down uh, from my ink pad. But honestly, I don't find I get great results when stamping like this. This may be just me. But if this is you, I find I get much, much smoother results, even stamping with Distress Oxides, if I use uh, something to apply the ink. So this could be a foam dauber, this could be a makeup sponge, this could just be a finger dauber, anything. I just find I get a much um, smoother, clearer, more saturated, solid image if I do it this way. So that's what I find easiest. I am going to take a little bit of the cracked pistachio and just do some of the flowers and then a little bit of the uh, lower half, the breast of the bird as well that's what we end up with wait till we add the second layer now I wasn't didn't want to use black here I felt like that was a lot so I've actually gone with a brown this is the pine cone ink from versifying clear now this is going to be stamped on top of an oxide ink so you need to remember that with your stamping are uh, we stamping two different types of inks here together so the uh, brown ink on top of the bird is going to look um, a little bit lighter than it might otherwise when we stamp it. But overall, I quite like the look here. And also, I can imagine being able to stamp the flowers individually, um, the colors of them, because they're far enough away from the bird that I don't even need to do like masking. Uh, you know, I'm not going to contaminate each one. So I think I quite like this. Uh, anyhow, I used a really quick sentiment again from the same stamp set two gorgeous sentiments that are going to work for me add some foam tape to the back and voila we have another card that is absolutely stunning really simple didn't take me long but it's the frame i feel like the frame is what finishes these off so for me it was investing in a die set or two that i knew could give this effect really instant gorgeous sort of uh, perfection on a card it also felt nice to me, I might just be sort of in that space right now, but nice to not use flowers or butterflies, which is something that there is a lot of in my stash. So I used a couple today that on purpose were not those, which I really enjoyed. So let me know what you think of these two. Of course, there will be supplies listed down below in case you're interested in checking them out along with a link to the Buy Me A Coffee website in case you would like to support my channel for the free videos I produce each week for you. But other than that, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye!